Well, a day early, but Happy New Year, West Florida Baptist, and we're glad for you to be out. It's a great way to end the year in being in church, and I hope you've enjoyed the holiday season. I want to first of all thank Pastor Mike, and I appreciate him so much for more reasons than you think. I do appreciate the opportunity to speak at West Florida Baptist, and I do not take that at all for granted, and I, it is a real honor. While I'm out traveling most of the years, this is where my wife goes to church. So she always comes to the second service, so you may not know her. But, uh, uh, but Merrily, this is where she gets fed spiritually. So I thank the Lord for Pastor Mike being my wife's pastor while I'm out traveling as well. And uh, we count it a great honor and a great privilege. If you have your Bibles, take them and turn to Hebrews chapter 5. And uh, kind of a tough text to even read, and I'm excited about what I'm going to share today. Now, I want to give a report of 2023 for me. Now, this is a report you will not hear from MSNBC. The report I'm going to give you today, no way are you ever going to hear this report on Fox. You're not going to hear it on CNN, and I'm telling you, you're not even going to hear it on ESPN. But I have been, this is my 65th Sir, a different ministry that I've been at in 2023. I believe that I have preached to over 15,000 different teenagers in different venues all across America. I have been in churches from the West Coast to the East Coast to the North to the South. And I want to give you a report. I'm going to share with you one of the greatest concerns that I have for the church today in America, and for West Florida Baptist Church. But I also want to give you a report today, a report that you won't hear anywhere else in any kind of news media or anything. I want you to know, I've been preaching for 45 years, and I say this from the bottom of my heart. I have never seen young people more hungry for the Word of God than they are right now in America. Now, you don't get that in almost anything that you hear. And everything that you're hearing about this generation coming up is bad, negative, and woe, are we in bad shape. But there is a group, there is a remnant of teenagers that right now are hungry to see God do something in their generation. Guys, I'm 66 years old. Never in a million years, when, you, when I was, 45 years ago when I started preaching, you tell me, hey, when you're 66, you'll be preaching to teenagers. I go, and there ain't no teenager going to listen to me. But you know what? I have found them to be more receptive than I ever have. And I'm going to tell you this. I have been in church after church that is experiencing to some level a spirit of revival. And in spite of everything that you're hearing, I want you to know, God is doing something in America right now. There is a burden and there is a passion of what's going on in this country. And I think because the darkness of the hour, I think the light has become even brighter. And in this dark hour, your testimony right now, your opportunities in Northwest Florida, your opportunities in Pace, Milton, and Pensacola is like it's never been before. And I just want to really encourage you with an incredible report. I, I'm telling you, decisions that have been made, there hasn't been a camp that I've spoken at that at the, by the end of the camp on a Friday night, the whole camp comes forward and just giving commitment and testimonies. And I always have those campers pray. And it has been amazing to hear the young people pray of what they want to see God do in their public schools, in their Christian schools, and what God wants to do in their community. And I am very excited. But I say all that to also tell you this. There is a great burden in my heart today about what we're going to need in 2024. Um, there have been different rides that I've gone on in amusement parks, and I'm a big roller coaster guy. I like roller coasters. And there's some roller coasters I got in, they strapped me in and everything, and I went like, ah, oh, that was pretty lame. I didn't need no safety belt. That wasn't no big deal. If I had the bar, that would have been enough right there. That was, but then I've been in some that I am glad they buckled me in, they put things down in front of me, and I because because of the ride. Well, I'm telling you right now, 2024, you get better get buckled in. It's going to be an amazing year 
in the United States of America. The election alone is going to cause you to buckle your seats. But you think about what's going on with AI. You think about what's going on in social media. You think about in every area, whether it's the economy, what in the world is going to happen in 2024? And I guess, you know, this can be a hyperbole, and I know this can be a little sensational, but I do pray that you will remember this message on the last Sunday, on the last day of 2023, and what was preached at West Florida Baptist, because I believe the greatest need for the church in 2024 is going to be discernment. You're going to, be, you're going to have to know how are you going to navigate through this election season. You're going to hear more advertisements about more lies than you have ever heard in your entire life. And you're going to have to know, how do I navigate this? If you're a, if you're a mom or dad, you're a parent, and you raise your hand if you're a parent. Okay, wow, okay, that is, that's the majority of you. Let me tell you something. You're going to have to know how to navigate. Whether your child's two or whether your child's 16, you're going to have to need some discernment on how to make decisions and what you're going to do with social media, what you're going to do with entertainment. You're going to have to know. Man, I, 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 man alive, I, I appreciate our church. I love our Pastor Mike. And by the way, you got a great preacher here in Pastor Mike. But I want to tell you something. If you think you're going to make it in 2024 by hearing a message once a week from Pastor Mike, you are in sad shape, my friend. It ain't going to happen. You're going to have to daily know how to discern the things that are going to be coming after and at you as well. So I've entitled the message, Spiritual Discernment in 2024. Spiritual Discernment. Now, the really key important in that title, Spiritual Discernment. Because there's different kinds of discernment in different areas. I was, uh, what, since I'm back this month, and I haven't been traveling so much this month, I did all my doctor's appointments. So I got all my dentist and my, my primary doctor, my dermatologist. I got everything, you know. And, uh, and, and so I went through all, and they all know what they're doing, man. My primary doctor could put a stethoscope on my, on my chest and say, hey, hey, take a deep breath, Jim. Hmm. <sighs> I don't like that, hmm, what's hmm me, you know? Hmm. He can discern things just in hearing me breathe. My dermatologist, I went in, and they, they, they froze a bunch of stuff all over my face, you know? And, uh, and uh, Dr. Taylor, she's checking things out on my back and everything like that. She's got a discerning eye. She can know basal cell, you know, she, she can pick it out. Because I'm saying, you know, I got a spot back here. What's that, doc? Oh, no, you're okay with that one. But I'm a little concerned about this one. She's got a discerning eye. Jewelers have a discerning eye. I'm thinking to myself, this stone don't look any different than this stone, but this stone's like $2,000 less than this stone. Oh, but the jeweler has a discerning eye. They can pick the flaws in different things. So there's discernment in different areas. We're going to talk about what kind of discernment. Everyone together? Yeah, that wasn't too good. All right, let's try that again. <laughs> We're going, to do, we're going to look at what kind of discernment today? Spiritual discernment. And there is no greater need in the church of America today than spiritual discernment. And so, by the way, a mechanic, a mechanic can hear an engine and just discern. I'll tell you what's wrong with that engine. I'm going like, man, I, I didn't hear nothing there. But they have that discernment. That's how we need to get spiritually in 2024. That when we hear something on social media or on television or wherever we are at the workplace or with our neighbors, we can spiritually discern. So we need a definition. So point number one, spiritual discernment defined. Spiritual discernment defined. So I'm going to give you a definition. This is my definition. You don't have to say this is the way discernment always has to be defined. But this is our working definition today. Are you ready? The divine skill. We'll come back to those two words. The divine skill of separating God's ways from man's ways. When a man has spiritual discernment, this is a divine skill of God to be able to separate, this is God's way, 
This is man's way. And to find out what is absolute truth. Now today, we have traded knowing truth for wanting unity. And I'll tell you what's happened. Today, the church isn't trying to know truth. The church is trying to find unity. And my friend, you can never be unified with God and one another until you have a truth that you're centered on. And we've got to have absolute truth before there can be any unity. It isn't about, well, we just need to find agreement with everyone. No, we need to find what's right and what's wrong. And we need to be able to discern that, and it's a divine skill. Now, I told you to turn to Hebrews 5. We're actually going to end with our text uh, today. Would you take your Bibles and turn to 1 Corinthians chapter 2? 1 Corinthians chapter 2, and wow, this is a powerful passage. And I hope you came today to study God's Word. And I hope you came today to really get something to help you as you enter into 2024. Because if you did, I think we've got something for you that'll help. 1 Corinthians chapter 2, I'm going to start reading at verse number 6. The Bible says, How be it we speak wisdom. Hebrew word there is Sophia. And it, it has to do with understand, it has to do with knowledge, but it also has to do with understanding as well. Now there can be a worldly Sophia, and there can be a spiritual Sophia, but it has to do with the, uh, the knowledge of something and the understanding, to be able to take it apart. Like the mechanic can hear the engine, like the doctor can hear the breath, like the jeweler can see the flaw. How, how be it, we speak wisdom among them that are perfect. Now, this is a key word here. Uh, we're going to find it in Hebrews 5, too. It has the idea of completion, and here's the key word, maturity. It has the idea of being mature, that are perfect, mature, yet not the wisdom, the Sophia of this world. That isn't what we need, nor of the princes of this world that come to naught. But we speak the knowledge, the understanding, the wisdom, the discernment of God in a mystery. Even the hidden wisdom which God ordained before the world unto our glory. Which none of the princes of this world knew. Okay, the world can't know this stuff. Only That's why I'm not upset with the world's thinking. I'm not upset with the way the world thinks about gender identity. I'm burdened the way the church discerns it because we ought to be spiritual in our discernment. Now look at this. Which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. They just don't look at, they don't see Christianity right. They don't see Christ right. Now look at verse 9. But as it is written, that would be Isaiah chapter 64 and verse 4. But as it is written, I have not seen nor ear heard, neither have entered into the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. Well, see, there you go, Brother Shetler. Right there, you know, I mean, it says right there that, you know, I have not seen, ear has not heard. We don't get it, man. We, we, we don't get the things of God. <sighs> we always stop at that verse. Everyone together, look at the next verse of Scripture. Look what it says. It's true, the natural man, the unsaved person, doesn't get it. But look at verse 10. But God hath revealed them unto everyone together. What's the next word? Oh, that was terrible. But God hath revealed them unto everyone, us, by his Spirit. For the Spirit searches all things, yea, the deep things of God. Okay. You cannot know this physically. You cannot know this naturally. But you can know the things of God spiritually. Because God, the Spirit, can reveal them unto you. Now look at verse 11. 
For what man knoweth the things of a man? Okay, only man knows what's going on inside, each one of you. You know, sometimes other people judge you or whatever, but they don't know exactly what's going on inside of you. Save the spirit of man which is in him. Even so the things of God knoweth no man, but the spirit of God. Now, we have received, oh, not the spirit of the world, but we have received the spirit which is of God. That we might know. So in 2024, you can know some things. Might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Which things also we speak. Not in the words which man's wisdom, Sophia, teacheth. But which the Holy Ghost teaches. Comparing spiritual things with spiritual things. And church, we need to do this. Now here's the text. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. Okay, now, we get so upset with the natural man, but I got to tell you, the natural man is just being the natural man. Why? Can't, man. How in the world can we live in a country that can't tell the difference between male and female? How in the world can we live in a country that's going in the direction that they're going in so many different... You know why? Because they're natural men. They can't see it spiritually the way that you see it. Our problem in our country is not natural man. Our problem in our country is spiritual man has turned into carnal man and there's no difference in our discernment from the world's. We need to become spiritual in our discerning. Now this is really good. Look what it says in the next verse. Oh, by the way, I want to talk to you about the natural man for just a minute because it's very possible that we may have somebody in this state, in this auditorium right now. I was speaking about two months ago in Clarksville, Tennessee. And Clarksville, Tennessee has a large military base, uh, Fort Campbell, uh, the uh, 101st Airborne Division, is uh, located in Clarksville, Tennessee. And um, the day I was preaching in church, I was about 150, 200 max. And uh, there was a young man there that was invited by another uh, man in the Air Force, invited this, his unsaved friend that he works with at, uh, at Fort Campbell. He brought him to church that day. Well, I didn't know about all that. But as I was preaching, there was a sharp-looking guy, tall. He had to be 6'2", 6'3". Now, he didn't have a Bible. He wasn't following along like everybody else in the church was. And he wasn't resistant. He wasn't, like, angry. And I've seen those before, let me tell you. But he just sat there just, like, dumbfounded. And I could just tell. I said, that's a natural man. He does not understand the things I'm preaching about. But he's interested. Well, I did something, don't worry, guys, I won't do it today, but I did something that in 45 years of preaching, I think I've only done five times. During the invitation, and I gave a very clear salvation invitation, during that invitation, he's watching me the whole time. Everyone's got their heads bowed. He's watching me the whole time. And again, I don't sense a resistance from him, but I did sense a spirit leading to go down from the platform and go out and talk to him. And I got to tell you, I don't think five times in 45 years of preaching I've ever done this. But I, I sensed a real leading to the Holy Spirit. I came down and I walked over to him. I said, hey, what's your name? He said, Eric. I said, Eric, do you want what I preach today? I'll never forget what he said. He said, honestly, I don't understand what you preach today. And I said, could I show you? He said, I'd like that. I took him out during the invitation. We went downstairs, and I, I'm in a church I've never been before, so I'm going like, I don't know where I am in this church, you know. Speaking about being lost, I was lost in the church, you know. But we went downstairs, and about 30 to 40 minutes later, Eric trusted Christ as his Savior. Now, let me tell you, Eric was a natural man. He did not understand what was going on. But he knew that those people had something that he wanted. And I believe that's the spirit of God that works in an individual. Now, you could be here today, and you go like, you know, I've been visiting this West Florida thing for a while now. 
And those people there, they got a joy. They got something. I've gone to their Christmas thing and everything like that. And that Pastor Mike, he's got a lot of energy. I, I like what I'm seeing, but I don't understand it. Now, let me tell you something. You're in the right place today. And let me tell you something else. That's the Holy Spirit of God working in your life right now. And it is very important to obey that spirit leading. There may be some of you that have been coming here for weeks, months, or maybe this is your first time here. But there is something inside of you that is saying, you know what? I'm missing something. That is the spirit of God speaking to your heart to come to know Jesus Christ as your savior. Now, you cannot get saved without the Holy Spirit speaking to your heart. You've got to have the Spirit of God, but here's what you can do. Once the Spirit of God speaks, you can do one of two things. And we do call this the free will of man. You can receive what the Spirit is doing in your life, or you can reject it. And I will tell you, the more you reject the Spirit's leading, the harder your heart gets. If you're in here and you're over 20 years of age, there's a good chance that hearing that Jesus Christ died for the penalty of your sin is probably not the first time you've ever heard it. But have you ever responded to that truth? If you have never responded to that truth, it is imperative that if the Spirit of God is going, you know what, I don't understand everything, but I want what these people have. There is something missing in my life. It is imperative that you follow that. God is not obligated to continue to burden your heart. If he's speaking, you better respond. That is the natural man, and it's very possible that there is someone like that here in this room right now, that you have never come to a personal relationship. Listen, that does not make us here at West Florida any better than you. We're no better. We're dirty, filthy, rotten sinners that have been saved by the grace of God. But I will tell you, there is a difference between us and you because the Spirit of God does dwell within us. I'm no better than anybody here, but I will tell you, I know the Spirit of God lives inside of me, and I am no longer a natural man. Now there can be a spiritual man. And look at what it says. So verse 14, oh boy. Verse, but the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Look at verse 15. But he that is spiritual. Now, West Florida Baptist, it is, it is very important to me that all of us say the next three words. Because in the day and age that we live in, in the Christianity that we see in America today, we do not understand this. But he that is spiritual would all of us say together the next three words. Everyone together. Judges all things. Yet he himself is judged by no man. But Brother Scheller, doesn't it say in Christ's greatest message in the Sermon on the Mount, doesn't it say something about judge not, lest ye be judged? It does. That's Matthew chapter 7, verse 1. It is very important that you read the next four verses. Because in the next four verses, it says this. You're a hypocrite. If you're going to judge somebody else and you got a stinking beam hanging out of your eye, how are you going to get the speck out of someone else's eye if you've got a beam in your own eye? You're a hypocrite. If you're going to judge others and you got things in your life that aren't right. But then he says this in verse number five of Matthew chapter seven. He says, get the beam out of your eye so you can help your brother Get the speck out of his eye. That passage doesn't say we don't judge. That passage says don't be judging until you've gotten right with God. And God's people said, amen. The problem isn't with judging things. The problem is don't be judging if you've got things in your own life. But once you get those things out of your life, man, we're supposed, the spiritual man judges all things. Now, I am going to put a clarification on that. There is one thing that we cannot judge. We cannot judge people's motives. Everyone together, you cannot judge people's... 
Yeah, I cannot judge people's motives. I don't know why you're here. You don't know why I'm preaching. I go to a lot of, I go to a lot of camps. As soon as I arrive on a camp on a Monday, I'm looking at those teenagers. I'm looking at their t-shirts. I want to know what they got on their t-shirts. I'm looking at their hairstyles and their colors of their hair. I'm looking at everything. I'm making one judgment after another. Brother Shuttler, that's not right to do. Listen, I can't be the effective preacher that I need to be unless I've made some judgments about the teens I'm preaching. Now listen, I can look at a teenager and go, that young person is full of bitterness. That young person is rebellious. I can judge that. Now listen what I can't judge. I can't judge why they are bitter. I have no idea what family background they come from. I have no idea what's happened in their life. It is not right for me to judge their motive, but I can judge their action. And I'm going to tell you something, church. You need to start judging all things. You need to be able to look at a situation and go, this is right and this is wrong. Now, I don't know why this is right, and I don't know why this is wrong in that person's life. I don't know their motive, but I absolutely can look at their lifestyle and go like, that's not right. That isn't where they should be. That isn't what they should be doing. That isn't how that, what they should be involved in, but I don't know why they're in that, but I can make that judgment, and I'm going to tell you, we are just so, well, we don't judge anyone. We, no, the spiritual man discerns all things. The spiritual man judges all things. We have become so, and Satan is having a heyday with this because we're so afraid to, well, I don't want to cast any, it, it's, it's just my perspective. Well, we're going to get to that in just a moment. That's why today we have traded knowing the truth for wanting unity. Living by absolutes of right and wrong has been exchanged for acceptance for all ways of life. I want to make a statement. I heard my son say this statement first time, and I've used it a lot. Lies are not love. We do not love someone for them to continue to believe a lie. When, when someone is believing a lie, you don't love them by supporting the lie that they believe. Lies are not love. Let's all try that once. Everyone together? Everyone together? Love. They are not love. Number two, spiritual discernment defined. The divine skill. Oh, I got to get to verse 15. Wait a second. For who hath known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. We have the ability to discern, it is a divine skill of separating God's way from man's way. Bible says in Proverbs chapter 14, verse 12, there is a way which seemeth right unto man, but the end thereof are the ways of death. Man, there's a, man, mankind is being mankind. Stop being so upset with the natural man. What you ought to get burdened for is the spiritual man stopping to be car carnal and start becoming spiritual. Number two, number two, spiritual discernment desired. Okay, we saw defined the divine skill of separating God's way from man's way. Now spiritual discernment desired. Everyone, take your Bible and turn to 1 Kings chapter 3. And as you're turning to 1 Kings chapter 3, I have a question for you. And I want you to respond out loud vigorously, okay? Here we go. Solomon was given something by God. And God said to Solomon, Solomon, I will give you one thing that you ask for. Whatever you ask for, I will give you. Man, wouldn't that be a cool thing? So God says to Solomon, Solomon, whatever you want, I will give it to you. And some of you Bible scholars, you all know what he asked for. So I'm going to ask you, say it out loud. And Solomon asked for wisdom. wisdom. Yeah. No. That is not what Solomon asked for. Look with me at 1 Kings chapter number 3. This is a jewel for the day. 1 Kings chapter number 3. Look what it says. And verse 7. So look at the end of verse 5. 
ask what I shall give thee. God says to Solomon, you ask whatever you want. Well, he asked for wisdom, Brother Shelley. Well, hold on. Look at verse 7. And now, O Lord my God, thou hast made thy servant king instead of David my father. Whoa, talk about shoes to fill. And I am but a little child. And I don't know how to go in. I don't know what I'm doing as an administrator. I don't know how to be a king. I don't know how to go out or come in. I don't know. I love that humility by him. And thy sir, by the way, humility is having the right view of yourself. And right here, later on in his life, he doesn't have this view. But right now in his life, Solomon's got a right view of himself. He says, man, I cannot do this. Verse 8. And thy servant is in the midst of thy people, which thou hast chosen, a great people that cannot be numbered nor accounted for multitude. Now look at this. Give therefore thy servant and everyone together. What's the next word? Understanding. Okay, brother Shetler. Understanding, wisdom, same thing. No, 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 no. The word understanding there is a very interesting Hebrew word. It has become one of my top three Hebrew words. I mean, it's up there with shalom, okay? The word is shema, shema. The word for understanding heart is shema. Everyone, let's practice a little Hebrew. The Hebrew word is, look at the person next to you and say shema. Now, if we have a Jewish person in here, or if you know a Jewish person, the very first passage of scripture that every Jew memorizes, when they're just little bambinos, when they're just little children, every Jew, it doesn't matter if they're Reformed, doesn't matter if they're Orthodox, doesn't matter if they're ultra-Orthodox, every Jew memorizes the Shema. It's found in Deuteronomy chapter 6, and it says this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord thy God is one God, and love him with all your heart, your mind, your soul. Deuteronomy 6, 4, and 5 is called the Shema. Let me tell you the word. Hear, O Israel. The word hear is the word, help me out, the word hear is the word Shema. And here's what it means. It doesn't mean, yeah, 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 I heard you, Mom. I heard you, Dad. That's not that word. It's the word that when you took driver's ed, and that, that instructor told you something, you heard and you did everything that driver, because you knew your life depended on it. So you did everything that driver instructor said. I taught Drew how to drive, and I got to tell you, he was, he was 17 when I taught him how to drive. Man, that was the best obedience he had ever been in his entire life. Everything I taught, I loved it, man. Every Saturday morning, we went out for about three months, and we'd drive on Highway 101 out in California, and man, Drew did everything I said. He had, he shamad. I'm telling you, man, he listened to everything. He has never done that since, but I'll tell you what, because he knew how important it was. Let me tell you what Solomon asked for. Well, Brother Shelley, he asked for wisdom. No, he did not. He asked for a Shema heart. Brother Shelley, I'm not sure I understand. I'll tell you what he desired. God, I don't know how to come in. I don't know how to go out. God, I do not know how to be king. My dad was the greatest king ever. I don't know what I'm doing, God. And if God, you're going to give me one thing, here's what I'm asking for. Would you give me a Shema heart? that I would hear from you every day of my life. Give me a heart that would hear from you. Give me a Shema heart, because if I can know, remember with our definition, the divine skill to separate God's way from man's way. In other words, folks, give me a heart that is hearing your word so I know your way, not man's way, so I can follow you. Give me a Shema heart. Now, when he gets this, look at this. Give therefore thy servant an, a Shema heart to judge thy people, to discern, that I may discern between good and bad. There's our definition. For who is able to judge this, thy so great a people? And the speech pleased the Lord. God, if you ask God for a Shema heart in 2024, it's what you need, and it will bring glory to him. That Solomon had asked this thing, and God said unto him, because thou hast asked this thing, 
And has not asked for thyself long life, neither has thou asked riches for thyself, nor has asked the life of thine enemies, but has asked for thyself understanding to discern Shema, hear, judgment. Behold, I have done according to thy words, and I have given thee wisdom, wise, and an understanding heart. Because you asked for a Shema heart, I'm going to give you everything else. I'm telling you, church, this is going to be a year like no other. That does not mean I don't believe in revival. That does not believe I don't believe that the rapture is going to happen this year. But I do believe this, that given all things, the church in America is going to have to know how to discern an election, is going to have to learn how to discern purchases, debt, economy, is going to have to learn what does my child need? There is never going to be a time in your life that you're going to need a divine skill to separate God's ways from man's ways like you're going to need in 2024. I don't preach doom and gloom with that. I'm just telling you, you're going to have to know what's right and wrong, and you're going to have to desire God. I'm going to tell you the question that should be the question above all questions in 2024. What does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? Look at the person next to you, point at them and say, what does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? What does the Bible say? That should be your number one question. Hey, I, I wonder what Pastor Mike thinks about this. No, no. Boy, I wonder what, uh, uh, what West Coast Academy, what my teacher, no, 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 no. What does the Bible say? In every place you go this year, in all that you do this year, the question you should be asking everyone together is, what's the question? That is the Shema heart. I want to know what God says on this. And I got to tell you, you start getting into AI. You start getting into finances. You start getting into education. You start getting into this election. And buddy, you better know what the Bible says. Not which I just feel this is the right thing. Ooh, watch out for that. Church, what does the Bible say? We'll give us a sermon. Last thing and we're done. Spiritual discernment developed. You say, okay, Brother Sheldon, I got this. I got the definition, and I got a desire for what you've been talking. I want a Shema heart. How do I develop it? Okay, I'm going to give you four ways. Number one, receive the word eagerly and willingly. Receive the word eagerly and willingly. Be at everything that West Florida Baptist has got going. Now, I have the opportunity to do the, the couples refresher in a few weeks, Lord willing. Uh, Marley and I will be here for your couples refresher, and we get the privilege to do that. I'm going to tell you something. Marriage is not rocket science. It is not rocket science. It's very simple because there's no other way I could understand it unless it was simple. I'm not the sharpest pencil in the box, but I've got to tell you something. I've been married for 43 years. There's definitely some things I've learned. You know what I'm going to do with the refresher? I hope you all are there. If you're married, I hope you're there. Marriage is honorable above all. And we're, I'll tell you what we're going to talk about. The basic needs of the wife and the basic needs of the husband. And all you have to do to meet the basic needs of your wife, husband, is to be the man of God that he created. And all you have to do to meet the basic needs of your husband, girls, is to be the wife, the woman that God created. This is not rocket science. We're going to refresh you on the roles of being a biblical man in the home and a biblical woman in the home because that's what it takes to be successful. Receive the word eagerly. Now, if you have time, uh, I'm just going to go ahead and start reading it. Acts chapter 17. It says this. Acts chapter 17, verse 10. And the brethren immediately sent away Paul and Silas by night unto Berea who coming thither went into the synagogue of the Jews. Now, this is what I know your name of your church is West Florida Baptist Church. But in 2024, you guys need to be the Berean Bible believers, okay? Verse 11, these were more noble than those in Thessalonica. Well, what made the, the church of Berea more noble than Thessalonica? In that they received the word with all readiness of mind and searched the scriptures daily whether those things were so therefore many of them believed you know how your faith grows your faith grows as you receive eagerly the word of God 
Some of you are struggling in your faith because you're struggling with the Bible. You've got to receive God's word. Boy, if God's word says it, I am all over. Number one, receive the word eagerly. Number two, get into the word daily to study it. Every day of your life in 2024, we start tomorrow. What a perfect, what a perfect service to make a commitment, God. I may fail here or there. I may forget a day. Something may happen one morning. But Lord, I'm making a commitment in 2024 that daily I'm going to be in the Word of God. However, I just got to tell you, we're fiddling around with God's Word. Make a commitment to this. Every day you read the Bible, you define at least one word. You define at least one word. Look up the definition of one word. I never have my devotions that I do not define at least one, usually three to five words. I look up, and you got all these little apps. Start using all that stuff for the good. Look up the definition of those words because knowing that, oh, this King James thing, I just don't understand. Oh, come on. It doesn't matter what translation. You got to define words, man. You got to get in the word and you got to define it. Number two, you study it. You chew on it. You meditate on it. Listen to this. Never does Jim Shetler leave his devotions without a takeaway that I'm going to apply during the day. I always get an application from God's word every day. This is my takeaway. I'm studying Revelation right now. And this morning, it was on the two witnesses in, in, uh, uh, in Revelation chapter 13. And I got some great stuff in there that I could go away with. You say, how can you get anything out of that? It was amazing. And how God will protect the witnesses. And you, you do not read God's word without taking something away from the word. You got to get in the word of God daily. You need to meet a, what a perfect time. The last day of 2024. I'm starting tomorrow. Receiving the word eagerly. Getting in the word daily. Number three, get godly counsel. Ooh. Proverbs 13, 20. We are listening to the wrong sources, folks. Some of you are listening. Listen to what it says in Proverbs 13, 20. He that walketh with wise men shall be wise, but the companion of fools shall be destroyed. Purpose in 2024, God, I'm going to walk with wise men. Now listen, I don't, know, I don't know this church that well, but I'll tell you what, you got a godly staff. You know, this morning I got to pray with Dan Libby. I'll tell you what, he's a godly man. You ought to be thankful for the men. Pastor Joel has got a heart, young person, Walk with wise men, and you will be wise. But some of you got companions on social media and companions at school that are going to destroy your life. Walk with wise, get godly counsel to get discernment. And then we close with this, and now we go to our text. Everyone together, Hebrews chapter 5. Listen to this passage now. Hebrews chapter 5, listen to verse 11. Of whom we have many things to say. And I got to tell you what's Florida Baptist, it's hard to utter them, seeing some of you are dull of hearing. And the word dull means lazy, sluggish, slothful. Some of you don't even bring your Bibles to church. Some of you just are a little late. Oh, I do my church thing once a week, and that's it. You're dull of hearing. You don't have a Shema heart. You got to become sensitive. Well, I'm telling you something. We are going into things in 2024 that this generation in this world has never seen before. You cannot be dull of hearing. Now look at verse 12, because I'm not going to uh, not going to embarrass anyone or call out anyone. But listen to this: For when, for the time, ye ought to be teachers, if you are in this room and you've been saved for more than seven years and you've been a believer. You ought to be teaching, maybe not have a Sunday school class, but you ought to be teaching other people. You ought to be discipling others. Some of you have been saved for 10, 15, 20, 25 years. And look what it says. For when for the time ye ought to be teachers, ye have need that one teach you again. Some of you got to hear the same things over and over again, which be the first principles of the oracles of God. Baby food, man. Some of you cannot take the meat and take a steak. You'll choke on it spiritually and are become such as have need of milk and not of strong meat. For everyone that useth milk 
is unskillful in the word of righteousness. And I just got to tell you, I see this in the church in America today. You can only almost just give him milk for he is a babe. But look at verse 14. But strong meat belongeth to them that are full age. There's that word perfection, mature, that are mature, even those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. You're going to love the Greek word exercised. You know what that Greek word is? You all know it. Exercise. Gymnasial. We get the word gymnasium from that word. And it's the word for workout. So, I'm going to tell you something about Jim Shuttler. Did you know that I'm a member of a fitness club? <laughs> you are? Yeah. And did you know I go to that fitness club six days a week? You, you, Brother Shuttler, you go six days a week? Yeah. I get there at 5.30 every morning, and I'm there till 7 o'clock, hour and a half every day. I go to the fitness. Now, some of you are thinking right now, if he's telling the truth, he ought to get his money back. <laughs> hey, Brother Scheller, six days a week you go to the fitness. Yeah, six days a week I go to the fitness. You spend an hour and a half there. Yeah, spend an hour and a half there. Brother Scheller, can I ask you a question? Yeah. What do you do there? Oh, I walk around. For an hour and a half, I go, well, yeah, well, what machines do you use? Oh, never touch them. Brother Shetler, you're a member of a fitness club. Yeah. And you go six days a week. Yeah. And you're there for an hour and a half. Yeah. And all you do is walk around the machines. Yeah. Well, Brother Shetler, can I inform you of something? What's that? You're never going to change if you don't start exercising the machines. Yeah, you know what? You're right. By the way, it is obvious I don't belong to a fitness club, okay? But you know what? Some of you walk around the machines every day, and nothing's ever changed in 2023. And I want to tell you why. You're not exercising the Word of God in your life. You know how you develop discernment? You practice, you exercise, you gymnasium the verses you do know. Now listen, I teach at a Bible college. I'm around young people all the time that have memorized verse after verse after verse. And I have come to realize, no, and I am assured of. It is not how many verses you know up here that matter. It's what you apply in God's word that will change your life. I, I don't care if you only know one verse. Live the one verse you know. The problem today in the church of America is that we got all this Bible knowledge and no Bible exercise. You cannot become discerning until you apply the scriptures you already know. But when you begin to exercise the scriptures you know, you begin to discern, you know what, this is right? You know what, this is wrong. West Florida Baptist, can I encourage you in 2024? We need discernment. We need the divine skill to separate God's ways from man's ways in our family, in our marriage, in our school, in our church, in our business, with our neighbors, in our witnessing. We got to know what is God's way and what is man's way. And we can only get that as we begin to exercise the scriptural truths we know. And when you do that, God begins to give you spiritual discernment and you become strong and you can handle the meat of the word. West Florida, you have grown by numbers. We've been coming here for three years. Every year we've come, every year when I come back, I'm not here often. It's bigger, it's larger in numbers. The West Florida Baptists, we need to grow in discernment too. We can't be a mile wide and an inch deep. We need to develop depth in our, in our spiritual walk with God by applying the scriptures we do know. 
Hey, you're going through the book of Romans right now. Are you taking anything from that and exercising it in your life? That is what the church needs today.